Tony, he's Mike, and this is part three of our uh, scholarly analysis of the films of Tom Fridley. Or <laughs> part one in our double dose of Tom Fridley. <laughs> oh, you gave away spoiler alert. <laughs> But today we are going to talk about the most no given sequel I've ever watched in my life. Friday the 13th, part six. Just because our parents keep telling us that Jason was only a legend doesn't mean it wasn't true. What if he did come back here? Looking for the camp counselor that caused him to drown as a boy. <laughs> And why? Because Tom Fridley said so. <laughs> um, hey, he has consensual sex this time around in this movie. Well, that's a win and a sweet, <laughs> a sweet RV and great advice for the campers. Um, I, I'm going to say this. Um, this was a Paramount film. This is not an indie flick anymore. Friday the no. 13th has been bought up. Tom Fridley tried <laughs> in this one. He legitimately put some effort into his character and his character's development. Mm -hmm. You know what you need, Megan? I've been telling you this forever. You need a guy like me, hey? <laughs> and, and I'm not going to say that it shows, <laughs> but it's there. <laughs> so, so the plot of the film is this. The, the kid that was played by Corey Feldman in the, the, the yes. fourth one? Mm -hmm. yep. he, he decides that he's going to make sure that Jason is going to burn in hell, so he goes to Jason's grave and accidentally unleashes him with, with Horshack from Welcome Back, Cotter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, which funny, uh, Kim, Kim posted on Facebook, like, is that the one with Horshack? I'm like, who the f*** is Horshack? I don't know what the hell you talking about. Look that shit up. I was like, yes, can't confirm that is Horshack. <laughs> but that all means. But, but, but hang on. So, so, oh. so yes, uh, Tommy Jarvis yes. digs up Jason because he has to know that he's dead. So he digs him up and for some reason stabs him with a metal fucking rod and leaves the rod in there. Lightning strikes. You have your Frankenstein moment. Jason comes back to life and shenanigans ensue. <laughs> There's no concern for continuity. They're, they even changed the name of Camp Crystal Lake. It's, it, they changed the name of the town so that they could forget about it. Except for, you know, everybody knows that it's still Camp Crystal Lake. It was just Camp Blood. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, like, legitimately, uh, this is the most thrown together film that actually is somewhat coherent that I think I've ever seen in my life. The, 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 the guy wrote it, uh, the guy who directed it also wrote it, uh, Tom, Tom McLaughlin. Okay. And I think he knew. Well, he, he knew what he was getting into. He's like, you know what? There's been five of these fucking things already. You know what? Let's just have some fucking fun with it. Yeah, there's there's yeah. a lot of tongue in cheeks moment in it, moments in it. It's very meta. They break the fourth wall. Yeah. Fourth, yeah. Fourth, fourth wall. They break the fourth wall. Why'd they have to go and dig up Jason? Some folks have a strange idea of entertainment. Um, and they throw a lot of silly jokes in there and oh, stuff like that. Absolutely. And there's, you know, references I know. Like, there's the one where they're in the VWB and they pull up and there's Jason and he's like, Darren, we better turn around. Why? Because I've seen enough horror movies to know any weirdo wearing a mask is never friendly. <laughs> it's very meta. No, and, yeah, and, and it, yeah. it, it doesn't take itself seriously. They no. have a lot of fun with it, and it's a fun movie because of it. I'm going to say that this isn't so much a horror film as it is a slapstick comedy with a ton of blood. <laughs> so, um, uh, that's, that's fairly this, accurate. This falls more into the Evil Dead 2 category than it ever fell into continuity with any of the Friday the 13th films. Groovy. Hello, lover. There is nothing scary about it. There is there is some genuinely laugh out loud hilarious shit. Stay there. What do you think? I think we're dead meat. When the two kids are under the bunk bed and they look at each other and he goes, <laughs> real dead meat. So, what were you gonna be when you grew up? 
Well, what were you going to be when you grew up? <laughs> I, I, I was laughing so damn hard. Um, so the gore effects are actually pretty solid. Really good. In this. Yes. Yes. Um, they, they knew what the audience was there yes. for. The, and rather than, than letting the audience make fun of their attempt at being serious, they, they definitely got in on the jokes on yeah. this one. I've never seen this one before. I had, oh, really? I had given up on Friday the 13th at this point. It was no longer like a serious horror film. Uh -huh. um, I got to be honest, I was wrong. Um, this movie is a blast. I had more fun watching this than I had any right to. I, I giggled like an idiot, and Tom Fridley was <laughs> somehow a captivating character. And when his character died, as he must because he's <laughs> Tom Fridley, I was genuinely disappointed. <laughs> I'm he got, got that, to the end, huh? he got that knife jammed all the way to the hilt right into his head. And then the RV is like, oh, oh, that's going to leave a mark. And then the RV like goes and flies up and flips over and catches fire. And I'm like, yeah, no, he's gone. He's he's done for. And then Jason is just standing on top of the, the flipped over RV. And I'm laughing hysterically at this point. This this movie is somehow trash and a masterpiece. There's a theme. <laughs> there is a theme with the films we picked for this block. Um, it's I, I I'm gonna have to actually buy this fucking thing. <laughs> oh my god! Holy shit! <laughs> that, wow. that is how much I enjoyed wow. how bad I, it is. I, <laughs> If, if, if someone had came in and told me that you were going to buy this movie, that you, or, or that you actually would have legit enjoy this movie, I would be like, are you f***ing nuts? Do you know f***ing Tony Greco? Well, apparently, I don't know Tony f***ing Greco, because never in a million years I think you'd actually enjoy this movie that f***ing much. Surprise, bitches! <laughs> so, um, let's talk about Tom, because this is a scholarly analysis of the films of Tom Fridley. Um, he's playing the same character he always plays. He's the He's the rockaholic <laughs> camp yes. counselor at Camp Blood. Yeah. <laughs> and um, he's got things to teach the youth. He's got some amazing things to teach the youth. Of course. You've got to be kidding. I, when he's giving his, his, the Indians use these pile of rocks to signal their squaws, and he's like explaining the whole, yeah, well, he wants to get rid of that squaw because he's found a new one, and he's got to, <laughs> he's got to, like, I'm like laughing so <laughs> hard at that whole explanation. Mike, throw the clip in right here. Look, here's a story. These are called Indian markers, okay? Let's just say you have a chief, right? And he dumps his squaw or his wife or whatever, and he decides, hey, I'm going to pick up with another one. I'm going to take off with her. So he takes off, leaving his son with the mother, and all of a sudden, you know, a week or two later, the son wants to catch up with his dad, right? He wants to learn how to shoot a bow, stuff, you know, kill buffalo, whatever these guys do. That's what happens is he comes up, knocks them all down before the mother catches up because she doesn't, he doesn't want to see any of her anymore. It is a masterpiece. <laughs> I, it is so chock full of bullshit. <laughs> and then when he actually hooks up with the girl, the, the dark-headed girl, who's actually, uh, oh, for, I forgot her name, but she's in Can't Find Me Love. She's the, uh, the, the, the pretty titty girl. Uh, I happen to know that in the whole school, there's only one other titty quite this pretty. But you don't get to see your titties which you don't get to see her titties in this movie either. No. Which, fun fact, this is the only Friday 13th movie where there's no nudity. I, I did catch that. I did catch that there was no boobies in this film. There was a ton of really attractive girls in this. Not one but titty. But no boobs. <clears throat> Anyways, yeah. go ahead, sorry. I, I was just going to say, that, that whole sequence where, where he's having sex with her and, and, and uh, they're like listening, they're like rocking out to the only song that's not done by Alice Cooper <laughs> yeah. on the soundtrack. <laughs> yes, I caught that. Um, uh, and, and she tells him, You gotta give it up to the end of the song. Have a slugger. It's only 10 more minutes. Not to finish until, like, the song Sounds is over, over yeah. and then the electricity gets cut to it. And she goes, Oh! Fuck! Ah, oh, yeah. Where's the kennel? <clears throat> Court, you did not already. Oh, come on, wasn't that the end of the song? <laughs> I, I was laughing so hard about that. And then, you know, the kill, where her face gets hammered into the plastic oh. into the bathroom so hard you can see the, the mold on that. It, I love that. It's my favorite, one of my favorite kills of all time. It was spectacular yes. fun. Oh, it's it, just it was, it was really well done. Tom Fridley killed it in this role. Um, his death 
is, it's probably the least graphic, but somehow the most memorable <laughs> on this one. Because he's, he's talking about how, man, this RV is awesome. <laughs> man, oh, listen to this sound system. This thing rocks. It's it's like, this is great. Oh, this is so good. Oh, this is great. Woo! This, this is great. See, I've never driven a house before. I like this. This is great. This is great. I remember this. It's an RV, Tom. I, I can appreciate the excitement. You just, you know, busted a nut, but it ain't that good. Um, it's it's a school bus with with a couch. So, um, well, at least a queen size bed in the back. But from what we've watched so far, I think this is Tom Fridley's most accomplished role. Oh, by far. <laughs> by far. I, and, and by far the best movie they watched with him in it. I'm also going to, I, I now understand why when we first saw Tom Fridley in, in Phantom of the Mall, Eric's Revenge, that you were like, hey, that's the dude from Friday the 13th. Because if I had seen this first, I wouldn't have been able to forget him either. I would have been, oh, hey, look, there's that Tom Friendly guy again. <laughs> so that's, that's how we wound up here. Uh, so so I, I don't know what else to say. Tom, you, you, you killed it. I wish you would have made it closer to the ending. Actually, I'm glad that you weren't playing Corey Feldman's character because this yeah. this is your wheelhouse, brother. This is this is the role you were born to play. <laughs> no one else could have done for this role what Tom Fridley did for it. <laughs> and I say that with a smile on my face, but totally unsarcastically. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. What have you got? <laughs> uh, uh, again, I, I love this film. I remember watching it for the very first time at Aunt Beth's house when she, when she lived in Windswept and Imperial back in 1986, 87 on VHS. Uh, you know, at the time, I was like, oh my God, we're really getting away. Watch this something. But watch it now. It's like, you know what? This is pretty fing pain. Yeah, I mean, the, the violence is there, of course, but yeah, there's like no tits. There's barely any cussing in this thing. It's surprisingly tame for an 80s slasher yeah um yeah yeah it's, it's almost family friendly I, you're not wrong you're not wrong no i i kind of weirdly agree with that this is what 87 88 86 86 okay so it was it was right at that like yeah like the pmrc coming out against the heavy metals the devil's music and all yeah. that is already in motion <laughs> yeah and the other thing is too is like i don't know if this maybe helped kick off that whole kind of thing too because like also like right about the same time was when uh, also uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street started getting kind of campy, too. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think... And Don Dockin wrote the music. Right. <laughs> Right, but you know, like like when uh, Part Five came out for Nightmare on Elm Street, it was like when they really started getting campy yeah. with it. I, off the fact. Well, actually, check Dream it. Warriors they started with the. I mean, they started kind of with the one-liners, and they, they were not taking it anywhere near as seriously with with three, mm. and then four it just it just got more and more. Let's amp it up. You know what? It, people are here to watch people get killed yeah. and, and giggle about it, and, and they delivered yeah. on that. But. Also, I'm going to say that by this point, the slasher genre had kind of gotten stale because there were so many oh, of yeah. them. And, and like, literally, there's only so much tension. And this is also where, like, people yelling at the screen, get out, you know, that kind yeah. of thing was happening at the theaters mm -hmm. for real. So, yeah. so why not have fun with it? Yeah. Subvert your audience's mm -hmm. expectations in a good way. Yeah. Uh, by, by actually letting them know you're in on the joke and you know why they're there. And, and yeah, in, in that regard, this film succeeds spectacularly. But also succeeded in the box office. While it had a $3 million budget, it brought in almost $20 million. Wow. Yeah. Wow. For yes. a franchise that was considered dead pretty much at yeah. this point. So, yeah. Um, so kudos, I'm, kudos I'm kind of surprised. Yeah. Uh, I'm not, not really. I mean, we watched it. We enjoyed it. We had a good time. And... And, and this is 30 yeah. years later. Yeah. That it, it holds up. It's still amazingly fun and funny. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know what else to say about this. Is there anything else? Um, I mean, we mentioned the Alice, well, we kind of mentioned the Alice Cooper songs. Uh, all of them were off of Constrictor. Uh, so The Man Without a, uh, sorry, The Man, Man Behind the, the Mask yeah. and uh, Teenage Frankenstein were both off that CD. It's actually a pretty decent CD. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's kind of campy and funny, just like this movie. So if you like this movie, check out uh, Alice Cooper's uh, Constrictor and I, I uh, enjoy do, that. I do got one question. The guy that played the, the main character, the one that actually accidentally, well, 
Oh, who, Tommy who Jarvis? Is he? Yeah, who okay. is he? What else so have he, I seen he, him he's, he's Tom Matthews. He was in Return of the Dead Part 2. Okay. That's where you know him from. And then also Jennifer Cook was in the original V series. The, 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 the pretty blonde. Show. Yeah, okay. Yes, yes. Okay. She, she was the half alien, half human baby. Okay, all yeah, right. That, that was her. Wow, she was young, you know. Oh, I guess she wouldn't have been too young. That only came out like, I mean, that's like 82, 83 when yeah. the V series was out. Maybe even 84. Possibly. I'll throw it up here. Yeah. So, but. But, uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, most of the people here are fairly recognizable. And of course, uh, Darcy DeMoss from uh, Camp Family Life, who we've mentioned already. Yeah. Um, and everybody else was just fucking fodder. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a ton of fun. It's on Hulu right now. I think all the Friday the 13th films are on Hulu I think so. this month. So yeah, t- check it out. Yeah. You, you'll laugh. You'll cry. You'll kiss, you know, three bucks. Goodbye. I, I, I got nothing. Um, no, you watch it for free. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you yeah. got a Hulu subscription. Yeah. Well, e- even then it's worth $3 all Just day long. Whatever you do, don't watch it on Tubi. <laughs> Well, it doesn't matter. There's no tits in Tubi, so you're you're you're, you're fine. I, that's where the T comes. <laughs> Anyways, that's what I got. Uh, like I said, I, I I am gonna buy this film on Blu-ray. Um, I was that entertained by it. Surprise. Uh, I'm not saying you need to buy it, but definitely watch it at least once. You'll dig it. It's, yeah, fun. it's fun. So, yeah, we will catch you next time. Not bad at all. That's it! Pull over, I'm driving! No way, I wanna ride!